Hi guys, thanks for pressing play on this video. What you're about to watch is a part of a masterclass that I was able to present at the Griffin Institute of the Performing Arts. The message is specific to the students of the Institute, but I realized that you may also receive a benefit from the message. So I decided to share it with you here. Some of the topics that we talk about include how to improve your stage presence, how to learn tunes, and why do we play music at all when most of us have no desire to be professional musicians? So without further delay, here's part of the master class. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit about jam session etiquette uh, and how you present yourself in music, period. We're also going to talk about why you even play music. What's the purpose of all this? Uh, body language body language and stage presence because I notice these are some things that we need to talk about so why does an audience member come to a concert you've been in an audience before tell me some reasons why doesn't why does a person go to a concert to be entertained, to be entertained. just say it shut it out to, they want to feel good energy. Maybe they're, they're feeling down about whatever, and they come to your concert to temporarily forget about their troubles. That's right. Any other reasons? That's good. Mainly you want to be entertained, you want to feel good. Maybe you, you want to just come out the house and hang with friends. That's all a part of good energy. Now what if you, as the performer, what if you're not having such a good day? How should you navigate that? Have you ever been around someone and they're laughing and then you start laughing without really knowing why? Has that happened to you? Yeah, we've all been there before. My point is that as a performer, the energy you bring to the, to the stage does go out to the audience and they feel that. That's important to keep in mind when you're performing. So what is your body saying. What is your body saying and why is that important? Real quick, everybody smile real big. I want to see your teeth for about 15 seconds. Ready? Smile. <laughs> right on. That was about 15 seconds approximately. I heard some people actually laugh out loud on my left. Why? I mean, did somebody tell a joke? Phys if you change your physical body, that'll change your mind, and then that's the circle that feeds itself. So even if you don't feel like performing, one of the most basic things you can do, and I know you've heard this before, is smile. If you don't feel good, your physiology will change in a few minutes. And then the audience will feel good about what you're doing. I'm already smiling a little bit big, bigger than I was when we started talking about smiling. All right. Um, another thing about body language. Uh, I noticed some people, not just here in general, people will come up small to the stage, maybe not even make eye contact with the audience. And, and your body is small. Look at me right here. Got my horn here. I'm not, I'm not even looking at the audience. There's no connection with the audience. And besides lack of connection with the audience, I'm shriveled up. Now, technically, as a, as a horn player, I am not going to have my best sound. It's physically impossible. So now you're going to sound bad, too. <laughs> and now people think you, you don't know what you're doing, and they might not come hear you again. And that's the opposite of what we want. So, keep yourself open. Simple rule is chest up and out. Everybody do that right now. Sit up tall or stand. And that's why we always, as, as teachers, get on your case about posture. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you about where your feet should be or anything. Just do chest up, shoulders back right now. Go. Notice, is it a little easier to breathe? It might feel a little unnatural, but is it easier to breathe? Think about that. Chest up, real tall. 
Now I want you to angle your chin up slightly. Is it a little easier to breathe, yes or no? Think about that. I already know the answer. Now watch me as a trumpet player. Miles Davis pose. <laughs> Chest up, chin up. Do you hear a difference, yes or no? Yes. All right. So that's all I have to say about that. So, so there are some points I wanted to make about, about your confidence. But um, if you come to the stage small, why? Why is that? Are you unsure about something? Yes or no? Yes or no? Are you unsure about something? Are you afraid of something? Most people say yes. I wasn't trying to lead you. The answer could have been no. But your body, your body language does tell the audience about what you're feeling, maybe even what you're thinking. Me as a performer, I've done this so much, I know what you're thinking. I can tell by little things that you do. So how can you build your confidence even before you step onto the stage? Be prepared. Be prepared, exactly. That's exactly right. Everybody say study. 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 Say study. study. What builds your confidence? Studying. If you, if you are unsure of a thing, study it in, in, in depth. The more you know, the more you learn, I should say, then that's a little bit um, more of the, a little bit less of the unknown. That's a double negative. Sorry about that. All right. So... Um, you might not know what a major chord is, uh, but read about it. Ask someone. Play it. Find out what it sounds like on the piano. And then now you know. That's just one small example. So how can you prepare before you come on stage? Listen to music. Or um, there is no or. I'll give you an example. How do I learn a song? Actually, that leads me to my next point. So when you study, you build confidence, and then when you come... When you approach the stage, it's like this, chest up, eye contact with the people. Even if you don't feel comfortable, that might feel a little unnatural at first, you'll grow into being comfortable there. All right? Stage presence, center. If you're being featured, maybe I'm up here with my, my guys, we're playing the melody in. We are all are here in the center. Maybe there's some acoustic things we want to make sure we can hear. You, you watch me play, there's no amplification. That's what I prefer. I generally take a step back. So I just want to hear this. But if I'm with people, I got to be with the team. But I'm here. I'm, here. I'm front and center. All right? If my, if my saxophone player is being featured on a solo, where do I go? One, two. Take a couple steps back. That's it. Or maybe I'll walk off totally, out of sight. You know what I you know what I keep in mind? For example, I'm recording right now, right? So what if you're on television? That might happen. I walk out of frame if I can. Out of frame. Now the focus is really on the person who's being featured. If I can't walk out of frame, maybe there's too many people on stage, I just now I make now I make myself small. Seriously. Or I'm listening intently with my eyes. Listen with my eyes. I know that sounds like you listen with your ears, Mr. Davis, but listen with your eyes. Watch the player. You know, you're smiling, you're nodding, you know, having fun. So many people came to me in the past. I don't like jazz, but I like what y'all did. Y'all sound so good. I can tell you're having fun. I want to talk about what to play and when not to play. In short, I'll keep it simple. If you're being featured, play out. If you're not, step back. And that's, that's just like the visual. But audibly, it's the, it's the same thing. So if you're, paying, if you're playing the background line, play it in the background. 
Here's a little, uh, little uh, riff on t on A train. I was just playing A train. I don't want you want to hear this. Don't do that. I want to talk about learning tunes. Raise your hand if you ever had that question. How do I learn tunes? I'm mostly older students have that question. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to talk about theory. How do you learn tunes? The main three things you need to learn. Um, I don't know. I can't rank them. They're, they are all important. But for me, I'm going to tell you, learn the form. Everybody say form. form. Everybody say form. form. Melody. Say melody. melody. Harmony. harmony. Thank you. One more time with me. Form, form. melody, form. harmony. Again, form, form. melody, form. harmony. One more time. Form, melody, harmony. So I, I had a Prince tribute concert Tuesday night. Does anybody like Prince by a show of hands? I had to learn 30 songs. First thing I did, sat down, I learned the form of the song. And it's really simple. You don't, have to, you don't need any staff paper. Just get a pencil and, and regular uh, paper. And this is what I did, I write intro. The word intro. Listen, how many bars is the intro? Oh, it's eight measures. Eight. Bar line. Okay, this is the verse. I'm counting measures the whole time. Oh, okay, I think that's eight measures. Cool. Oh, the chorus is next. I'm counting measures, 12 measures. Cool. Oh, wait a minute. The verse came back. Let me listen. Seven, eight, chorus. Oh, it's so just like before, but it's different words. So I'm going to write two, verse one, verse two. But I, that's it. Chorus, the same. Oh, nothing changed. What do you think I'm going to write? The verse in the course was exactly the same. What am I going to write? Repeat sign. I haven't written any notes. I'm just writing the, the outline of the, of the tune. After that came the bridge. Four bars. Cool. And guess what? I'm telling you this from memory. I know it now. It's a part of me. Because I put the work in up front to learn it. Right. How do you learn a melody? You can learn a melody without touching your instrument. How do you think you do that? Say it out loud. You got it. You sing and you listen. First, you got to listen. First, everybody say first. first. You listen. Yes. Yeah. Because what are you singing if you don't, you know, you got to find out what that is. And then you sing. Listen, then sing. Listen, then sing. Who has the ability? No, all of us have the ability. I, I shouldn't use, say, phrase it that way. Right now, if I asked you to, who could, who could um, listen to a brand new song one time and know the whole tune, everything? Form, melody, harmony. Is there anybody here? Raise your hand. All right. Some people I know can do that. I'm not one of them. Generally, it takes me countless repetitions. Who knows how many? 30, 60. I don't know how many it takes. Well, it's a lot. And then, like, the, iTunes, the iTunes counter will let you know. <laughs> and, uh, but by, by that time, you know, I know the song. I really know the song. All right? So the, learn the melody, sing it. Wh what makes sound? This is not a trick question. How is sound created? Just say it. How, say, somebody say it, say it louder. Vibration. Sound is created by vibration, does that mean? While, while you sing, you're creating vibrations, which is physically, literally it's physically connecting you to the music. You learn the distance. We're all musicians here, so if I said, Playing A on your instrument, who knows what that feels like by a show of hands? Yeah, you know what that feels like. If you don't, it'll come. You know what A feels like. So if you're singing a song um, while you're learning, you haven't touched the instrument yet, the vibration, you physically are connected to that tune. That's a big step. That's a, that's a big step. By the time I get to the trumpet, it takes me only a couple of minutes, maybe 10 at the most. That's long. You, it's usually more like two or two to five minutes. So that's a big deal. Um, I'm putting all my time in up front. A lot of time listening for the form. But listening to the form, I already heard the melody as many times as it took me to write it down. All right? 
Now, how about harmony? How does, how does one learn harmony? And you listen for that bass, and you find it. Where, where is it? But when you find it, it resonates with you differently. It feels good. All right? Maybe you write that down. Oh, that bass note is G. All right? Oh, the next bass note is D. Cool. Oh, the next bass note is A. You have a lot of information now. You have the bass note and the melody note. How many notes does it take to make a, a triad? I gave you the answer in the question. Say it with confidence. Three. Oh, but I have two of the notes given to me already. It's going to be easier to find that third note. All of this is a process that should not be skipped. All right? I'm telling you what to do to come to the stage with more confidence. Your body language is going to change. You're going to be more open. And you're going to sound good as a result. There's a pre prerequisite to stepping onto this stage. And that is to study. Everybody say study. study. That's it. If you don't study, don't come up here. If you don't study, do not come on the bandstand. I'm serious about that. If you're not serious enough to study, then you should not come to the bandstand. You should have a lot more respect for your bandmates and for your audience. Don't come up here without doing your homework first. I'm very passionate about that. Now, with that said, if you're playing, um, let's use this jam session as an example. You get, you get a list before you arrive out of, let's say, eight songs. You should, you should study. Everybody say study. Everybody say study. Study at least one of them. Study at least one of them. And come up here with confidence and demonstrate. Practice will take you so far. Performance will take you the rest of the way. Practice will take you so far, but performance will take you the rest of the way. Now, with that said, I don't expect anybody in the first week to, to sound as good as they would in the 30th week. I know you're not going to be at your ultimate that quick, but you need the repetitions. We, we as people, your muscles need those repetitions. In your armature, your fingers, even your mind, you need those repetitions. Privately in the practice room and publicly in front of people. There are different lessons you learn in front of a live audience. So if you never come up here, if you never come up to the bandstand, and again, don't do that if you don't study, but if you never come to the bandstand, there's a whole set of lessons you'll never learn. All right, you need those repetitions. Now, big question, and uh, answer me by raising your hand. If this statement is true for you, I have every intention of being a professional musician after I graduate. Raise your hand if that's true for you. Whatever professional means, raise it high, be proud. Keep your hand up and look around the room as you do. I intend to be a professional musician after I graduate. High school, college, whatever that is, I don't know. All right, it's about 50-50, but it's, I'll keep my hands down now. It's more people that aren't. So you're gonna change your mind, some of you, that's fine. Um, but the, uh, to the others who, aren't, who know they're not going to go that way, why do we do this at all? Are we wasting our time coming here every week? Are we wasting our time practicing at home and playing in school? Why do this at all? Who's thought about that before? Now, what's interesting is the hands that said they want to be musicians, a lot, of, a lot of you didn't raise your hand this time. That's pretty serious. Well, here's the thing. How you do one thing is how you do all things. If you don't take the time to study before you come to the bandstand, these are lessons that you'll, that you'll use in real life, in your, in your work, in your interactions with other people. So let's say you had a concert coming up, and you... You studied, but you skipped the bridge because, man, I, don't, I can't really hear what were those changes. Oh, man, I'll come back to it. But then you forget, and you never come back to it. You didn't really forget. You're just lazy. That's true. All right? So now in work and life, you're still going to be lazy. You got to sit down and do the hard thing. Take as much time as, you, as it takes. 
until you get it right. What happens is, over time, the, the amount, let's say it takes me 30 minutes to, to do it. It's making that number up. The next time I do it, it's gonna be 29 and a half minutes. That's improvement. Most people say, man, it's, it's taking too long. But that's still improvement. The time I do it after that takes me 29 minutes flat. But that's improvement. And the time I do it next, 23 minutes. Why? Wait a minute. What happened? That's a big jump. And eventually, two minutes. You're working that muscle. All right? So you study, you prepare. These are lessons that you, uh, that music, the whole purpose of it all, studying an instrument, is to prepare you for real life. That's it. Another lesson, how do you interact with other people? Raise your hand if you know everybody's name in this room right now. That's, that's a peer of yours. That's a peer. Raise your hand, keep it up. I'm, I'm taking inventory. All right, cool. That's actually, it's not cool. Everybody's hand should be up. All right, you can put it down now. So take some time today, I'm serious. Introduce yourself to each other. All right, this is why this is important. Um, we get better together. Everybody say that with me. We get better together. We get better together. We get better together. Yeah, you don't do anything alone at a high level. Not at a high, not at a level of excellence. You always do it with people. Have you ever had a great experience, but you were by yourself, and like, man, I wish so-and-so was with me to share that with me? Raise your hand if that's happened to you. Yeah, because we're better together. Preparation, say preparation. preparation. Say it loud with confidence. Preparation. Plus experience. Plus experience. Equals confidence. Equals confidence. You gotta get your reps in. Prep the, the preparation is the practice room by yourself. The experience is the performance. Check this out. It's a difference. I forgot my point. <laughs> oh, real, real time feedback. When, it, when the sound comes out the bell, you, you know if you feel good or if it makes you smile or if it makes you cringe. Ask yourself the questions. Why am I cringing? Why does that sound bad? And, and answer the question and then adjust. Okay, so when you're playing for an audience, um, how do you balance playing for them and then playing for yourself? Like, is there a balance that you have to achieve? How do I balance playing for an audience versus playing for myself? Another life lesson. What did we just talk about? Uh, life is better together. Is it, is it better to keep things to yourself or to share it with other people? So give the gift of music. I do take thought when I'm making a set list. Yeah, I think the audience will like this song. Uh, I don't like playing this particular song. Hmm. Maybe how can I uh, project the same feeling with a different song? One that they would like just the same. Think about these things. I think about that. Now you do need to present yourself in the best way possible. Maybe you, maybe you still have to work certain things out. So maybe you'll simplify it. Maybe you'll play a different song altogether. But there is some thought there. Does that mm -hmm. uh, when you were first starting out, how long did it take you to prepare before you were coming up on stage and doing all this stuff? How long? I don't know if there's a definitive answer to that. The way I look at it is preparation started when I began playing the instrument. For me, I don't know how many others adopt, um, share this philosophy, but I practice, my, my practice is primarily like fundamentals, slurs, tonguing, uh, long tones, boring stuff. Nobody likes doing that. However, um, when I get phone calls to do cool things, it's, it's less time I have to prepare. 
Like there's this one particular song I played recently, like the tonguing was really difficult. But I practice tonguing difficult things. Does that make sense? So um, I'll try to give you a little bit more solid answer. So like if, I, if there's something on my calendar, uh, for example, I, I have a Chicago Jazz for Harmonic concert coming up next month at Millennium Park. And I know Orber Davis writes high register things for the trumpet. So I, um, I tailor my practice toward that. Long tones, more long tones in the upper register, more slurs going up there so that I can build my endurance for that. Does it make sense? So the preparation never, ne it never stops. But I can, I can tailor it towards certain uh, concerts. Hey guys, thanks for sticking through till the end. Press the like button if at least one of these tips were for you. And watch another lesson here in the channel. See you next time.